What's up, YouTubers and Joe fans? Welcome back. Today we're taking a look at the 2020 Retroline G.I. Joe Awestriker. Now, this has only been exclusive to Walmart. Let's start by looking at the artwork on the front of the box. Now, compared to the original 1985 Hector Garrido artwork, they did a pretty decent job. Let's see what's missing. As you can see, they eliminated the word A Real American Hero under the G.I. Joe trademark. Obviously, the picture of Crankcase is drawn differently to represent the new figure. There's a word warning down here. And they did exclude some of the other smaller writing as well. Flipping the box around. Let's see what the back of the box looks like compared to the original 85 box. And they, they did carry over the engine detail, the cannon detail. They left Crankcase in the middle. You can see that right here there's no more flag points. They've also excluded some of the smaller writing that shows off the detail of the vehicle. Let's take a look at the file card. And as you can see, this is written in multiple languages. And this gives a really brief description of Crankcase as opposed to the original. Nowhere near the same amount of description or detail for the character. Now as we've gotten older, I've learned to appreciate the artwork a lot more now than I did when I was a kid. And they really did a decent job. Much better than the 25th anniversary box art that we got, which had just basically a window box and no flashy pictures. I laid out the contents of the packaging so you can see what was inside. Here you can see the body, the cannon and the antennas with the hose, the tires, the, the roll cage, the label sheet, and there's some instructions right here, so there is some assembly required. And on the label sheet, it shows you how to put the vehicle together. If you flip it over, it gives you the placement for the labels or stickers. And I have to tell you, it did bring me back to 1985 when I got my original striker And putting the labels on and assembling the actual vehicle. It was a nice little flashback. I'll put it together so we can see what it looks like. And here we have the new Awestriker all assembled in all its glory. It only took me literally 10 minutes to put this thing together. I didn't opt to put all the labels on because I'm not really a big sticker guy. And I liked how in the animated series it looked rather plain and simple. And over here we have the newly sculpted Crankcase figure. And this is one of those rare characters that made very brief appearances in the animated series. It didn't have any lines. Now before we take a look at the new Crankcase figure, I thought it would be kind of fun if I brought in my original childhood 1985 Awestriker and did some comparisons. Slide this over. And here we have our childhood Awestriker. It's held up really well after all these years. Let me turn it to the front so we can get a good look. As you can see, it has the same clear lens headlights with the brush bar. The same Canon operated camera. It's got the same treads on the wheels. We spin it around to the side, get a profile look. They did a great job remolding the cannon on top. My antennas held up really well after all these years. Normally you see them slumped over and they did a really good job upgrading the cannon attachment where this one has a post and this one actually had a couple of teeth which were prone to breaking. I'm glad they carried over the shock system in the rear and in the front like the original. This was a lot of fun as a kid bringing this thing out in the dirt and going 4 by 4 ring As you can see, the new one is a lighter shade of green and a lighter gray. I'm not sure if it's coming off on camera. Putting it around to the back side. As you can see, they use the same mold for the engine cover. It has all the same detail here and on top. Now, these things are removable, so let's take this cover off and remove the original. And in the original, the engine was removable. This is a darker gray color. Now let's see if they did the same thing on the retro. And yep, it comes out. They carried over all the same gray detail with the exhaust and the fan on top. 
and some of the detail on this side. And this just posts back in. There's a post right here. And there's a hole on the bottom of the engine. So if I can't get my fat fingers in here. So that's a nice feature that they carried over. And I'm glad that they actually were able to keep some of the original molds from 1985. So this generation can enjoy these toys. Now of course these just snap back on. Let's take a look at the driver side. It looks like they use the same molding for you know the steering wheel and the interior. Let's spin these a little bit so we can get a better look. There's a stick shift, just like the original. Get in a little closer. And you can see all the detail on the seats and the dashboard. And again, this is molded in a lighter gray than the original. Now, I know they've released this mold quite a few times over the years. It's really nice that they brought it back to the OD green. Now, on the original, the cannon went up and down and spun 360 degrees. And they carried that over on the new one. And of course, this one's nice and tight. The front camera that controls a cannon works. Just like the original. Again, I think they did a really fantastic job recreating the original. Oh yeah, one thing of note. On the new one, the peg for the newer figures is, of course, smaller to accommodate the foothold pegs on the modern figures. Whereas on the original, it was much wider to accommodate their footholds. Let's bring it back around to the front. And the last thing I wanted to point out is they actually carried over the steering mechanism where these actually turn left and right just like the original. Now with the Ostriker out of the way, we can take a look at the newly sculpted crankcase figure. And as you can see, they carried over the green shirt, the gray helmet, and the ginger beard. And of course, the helmet is removable. This is a brown molded plastic with gray paint and is pretty pliable. Let's take a look at the brand new head sculpt. Now give Hasbro props, they did a fantastic job on this. It looks pretty realistic. Let's look at his tan pants and his brown boots. He's got the black gloves. He's got the brown web work that actually goes around to the back. And that is removable too. Let me put his helmet back on and I thought it would be kind of fun to bring in some comparisons. So here's my original 1985 crankcase figure. And as you can see, they follow the same color scheme. The green and the tan. The one thing that they did miss is on the original, there was a gray watch on his wrist. And by looking at the figure and the color scheme, you can actually tell that this new figure is crankcase if it was standing on your shelf. Now they also released a 25th anniversary crankcase figure that came with this striker. And as you can see, there's a lot of differences here. So let me move the vintage figure back and bring these two in close to the camera so you can see the differences. Let's get the helmets off. And this will hopefully answer some of your questions out there. Now obviously they used a brand new head sculpt on the retro line. And on the 25th anniversary, it looks like they reused the breaker head sculpt for this crack case. They've used all new parts for the new retro crankcase figure. You can see that the pants are different. This one has a pouch up here. And this one doesn't. On the side, the 25th anniversary had a knife holder, but this one does not. And they clearly used a different color palette for both these figures. Now on the 25th anniversary, you notice that he has a closed fist, whereas this one does not. 
and the only thing I can see that they reuse is the upper chest piece on both these figures. Now, looking at the helmets, this one's gray and this one's green. Let's put this on and push him back. And bring him in close and let's take a look at his articulation. Now, his head moves left and right. Not too much up. A little bit down. He does have the ab crunch so we can go forward a little bit. And go back a little bit. Of course his arm raises up. 360 degrees at the shoulder. Not quite 90 degrees at the elbow. And this spins 360 degrees. The gloves actually spin, but there's no wrist articulation. He does swivel at the diaphragm. The strapping is removable and coming down to his legs he does a splits this far, he can kick forward this far. He does have a double jointed knee. And as you can see, the ankle does spin. Point the toe down. And it points up really good. Now unfortunately, I am disappointed that they used the old moldings for these arms and had they used something new, this really would have knocked this figure out of the park for me. Now I'm the type of person that with every negative I have to find a positive. And I do like the new head sculpt they used. And I do like all the body parts that they used with the exception of the arms of course. And it's really not a bad looking figure. And this actually gives me another version or another sculpted crankcase for my collection. So hopefully, by doing some of these comparisons, this will answer some of your questions out there as to how they all look together. There was one more thing I noticed on the original that they didn't carry over to the newer figures, and on his right bicep, he has a World War II British 7th Light Infantry patch on it, and I'm not sure if it's coming off on camera, but unfortunately, they did not add this on either of the new figures. I just wanted to point that out. Well, this has been my look at the brand new released Retro Collection Striker. If you don't own the original, and you missed out on the 25th anniversary release, this will make a great addition to your collection. This gives you an opportunity to own the newly sculpted crankcase figure, and I have to tell you, it looks great with all these modern figures riding on the side of this thing. And as always, I'd like to thank you for watching, and if you like what you see, Join the community and hit that subscribe button. And remember, share your knowledge. Yo, show!